India has apparently become one of the world's largest plastic polluters. But we can turn this around because India also has green gold. We are not recycling the plastic the way it should be done. How bamboo could be a solution to at least part of the plastic problem. Bamboo releases 35% more oxygen. We can call it absolutely organic also. Bamboo is very versatile. People think that bamboo is only artisanal. We are using engineered bamboo for construction also. So National Bamboo Mission is helping farmers to grow bamboo. We have delivered more than 10 million products in the market. Policies have evolved. Now it's up to us as consumers. We at Rain Matter are learning about how climate change is affecting you and me. More importantly, what we can do about it. Join us as we speak with people who are working on solutions for India. Welcome to the Climate Conversations. From dawn to dusk, how many plastic products do we use? Many, like 20-25 products. Really? Yeah, maybe toothbrush, combs, razors, your slippers, bottles, uh, cutlery set, your maybe tableware, your drinkware. Problem is, we are not segregating the plastic or we are not recycling the plastic the way it should be done. First toothbrush, the plastic toothbrush that you have used mm. is somewhere lying around on the earth. And uh, again, it's a plastic pollution. Did you know that plastic toothbrushes such as the one that we use every day, or the single-use ones that hotels and airlines provide, have only been around since 1935 when DuPont adapted nylon bristles. Before that, the West used soot and salt on a rag and then picked bristles. In India, people chewed neem twigs. Yes, I know, they're all a bit inconvenient. I know that there aren't always convenient, sustainable, alternative products available for us to use. But in the case of toothbrushes and quite a few other things, actually they are. Bamboo. India has the largest area covered with bamboo. We sat down with Agni Mitra of Amudu right in the middle of a bamboo patch to discuss how bamboo could be a solution to at least part of the plastic problem. I got an opportunity uh, to, to study and work in Germany and I saw different type of bamboo products uh, in, the, in, the, in the zero waste store and I, when I, when I was trying to uh, check from where these products were coming. When I did a research, I found like more than 90 to 95 percent of the bamboo market is controlled by the Southeast Asian countries. Hmm. When we think about bamboo, people think that bamboo is only artisanal. So we only export poles, we are not exporting any finished goods made from bamboo. Ki artisans can hmm. only manufacture, like hmm. do. When, but when, when we call it an artisanal, we cannot scale. Let's understand why we used bamboo only for artisanal products until recently, while China was not only making products at scale, but also had developed engineered bamboo. Bamboo is a grass. Right. And uh, it grows very, very fast. Okay. But I believe the Indian Forest Act classified it as a tree, tree. until recently, right? Yeah, 2017. after 2016, so movement of the movement of bamboo from one state to other state was, was restricted. That yes. was the reason why yes. it was being used yes, for small. Absolutely. But in 2017, the awareness had come, hmm. I assume. Yes. So somebody got the law changed. Bamboo okay. can grow anywhere. Okay. That's the best But I part. believe yeah. you don't need to replant it, right? The, yeah. the seeds, yes. are, it's automatic, it yes. just keeps growing. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. That's why bamboo is called a green gold. It doesn't need water much. It, it, it prevents from soil degradation. So it holds the soil very strong. Bamboo releases 35% more oxygen uh, compared to any other tree. Bamboo is a natural antibacterial antifungal properties. Uh, bamboo doesn't need any fertilizers. Uh, that's why a lot of people use bamboo for a lot of other products because it doesn't have any toxin, okay. uh, you know, fertilizers. You can call it absolutely organic also. So National Bamboo Mission is uh, helping farmers to grow bamboo and they, they give saplings huh. at a very, very cheap rate. They are encouraging farmers to grow bamboo. Bamboo was more like people are using bamboo to make lampshades and, you know, okay. artisanal so very, products. Very, very small scale. Very, yeah, table, cheers. During the COVID lockdown, when Agni was stuck in India, he decided to start two companies. One in medical devices, which is where his background was, and the second was kind of a passion project in bamboo. But when the bamboo business started to do much better than the other one, he decided to apply his engineering background to scale bamboo. He took on two co-founders, Saurav Day and Avijit Rajak, into Amwudu to start making toothbrushes and razor handles to supply two brands 
that would then add the toothpaste and shaving cream for single use purposes. This required working with farmers and artisans in northeast of India. So there are almost 140 species of bamboo currently in India. We predominantly use uh, two species of bamboo. One is Tulda and one is Balkoa. The, why did you pick these two varieties? So these are uh, abundant in India. Uh, most of the places, most of the farmers, the artisans, hmm. were working very closely and they usually have this bamboo. It's, it has been passed down to the generation. Some people who are making bamboo mats for hundreds and hundreds of years. In a lot of places like Konkan areas, like Karnataka, Maharashtra, a lot of hmm. people have started planting it. Bamboo is very versatile in that not only can it be used as is, but can also be made into pulp for paper-based products such as tissues, toilet paper, etc. But also be made much harder into engineered bamboo, which can be used for construction and interiors as it becomes harder than steel. But this requires innovations in the machines. So you need machines, high-end machines, semi-automatic machines to scale and produce different types of products. Even to make a toothbrush from a bamboo is a very, very uh, high precision work. And I also call this a bamboo tech because a lot of tech goes in, a lot of machines, a lot of pneumatics, a lot of precision engineering. And then we have a team of uh, R&D people who are rigorously working every day to develop machines, uh, develop blades, uh, develop uh, precision uh, setups so that we can, uh, we can start doing all these things. We walked through the facility outside Kolkata to see the various machines and processes that cut and shape the bamboo and also how to bond them together with non-toxic and non-polluting alternatives. Even for the simple looking toothbrush, there is no point replacing the plastic handle with a bamboo handle unless the bristles are also compostable. Ambudu sources the bristles made out of castor oil. Ironically, supplied by the same DuPont that invented the toothbrushes. After carbonization, when we get the bamboo, so we send it for a, a parallel splitter. So it is okay. split it into strips, okay. but it will have the skin on. Okay. Then it goes to a foresight planner. So it goes to the foresight planner, we get the strips. And then stri these strips are cut into small pieces. It will go for the toothbrushes. So now we can go to the shape copier machine. So these are the strips. It's inside, strips are stacked here. So he making the all the edges yeah. uh, like smooth okay. and okay. sharper. This is the bristle shooting machine. Yeah, we put the bristles. Then there is innovation in making bamboo harder than steel to be able to use them in the construction industry. Engineered bamboo is much more stronger. With engineered bamboo, uh, you can do a lot of things. We are using engineered bamboo for construction also. We have done a lot of projects also recently. So uh, bamboo flooring is uh, is one of the best alternatives to your wooden flooring. This bamboo has a greater uh, tensile strength than steel and the compressive strength of bamboo is similar to concrete. We are getting into bamboo flooring. And not only indo indoor flooring, we are doing outdoor flooring. Okay. We are doing wall panels. Okay. We are doing ceiling with bamboo. Now these long strips we fuse together to make it like a ply. So yeah, so you gluing together strips of bamboo. Yes. What is the glue? We have a natural adhesive uh, okay. that is a proprietary glue. Okay. I don't think any company has at this moment have any non-toxic adhesive for manufacturing engineered bamboo. There are so many things that we take for granted that require innovation, whether it's the glue or the process of how to stop fungal infection. Agni knew that the product had to match the convenience and price of plastic. In the last two, three years, we have done a lot of research on this and we now have completely stopped uh, uh, fungal infection on bamboo. Tubers. How do you do that? So a lot of tech has gone in. So uh, we use UV lights uh, okay. to treat our bamboo. Okay. And then we do a lot of uh, uh, we do we do a lot of natural preservatives uh, to keep the fungus away. UV was innovated by us. The hardest problem to solve is changing consumer behavior because we think of only our own convenience. The toothpaste that goes with the toothbrush, the shaving foam that goes with the razor. While the company started partnering with others to complete the package, they are now turning to make toothpaste tablets and shaving foam too. Hard problems indeed. So we added uh, combs, we added razors. We have developed our own sustainable paste. 
we have developed our own sustainable sh shaving gel in craft paper. Okay. And now we are completing the kit. The other hard problem that most founders say that we have covered in the climate conversations is the topic of just transition. It's not just about putting capital and machines to work, but working with marginalized farmers to grow bamboo sustainably. We also wanted to work with marginalized farmers and marginalized artisans. Mm. So that's why we work with farmers who have less than one acre of land mm. and artisans who earn less than 10,000 rupees. So one pole uh, that we buy from uh, farmers ranges from 80 rupees to 110 rupees, one single pole. Okay. Of around 15 to 20 feet of bamboo. Most of the products that we make, hmm. the artisans are usually from Bengal. And the bamboo comes from Northeast. Okay. Is there a tradition in Bengal for this? Yes, so Bengal has a lot of artisans. Hmm. And uh, there are a lot of artisans who were doing, who, who used to manufacture a lot of products, hmm. which we have scaled up. We started scaling, we're giving machines to the artisans so they, they can process it at the right place where mm. uh, they are getting their bamboo pulp from or mm. maybe the bamboo mm. where the bamboo grows very uh, mm. like in the northeast part basic concept of the company is in terms of social impact we want to add more and more farmers and artisans we have a target by 2030 we want to reach a figure of 100,000 farmers and 100,000 artisans across India of course artisans will always be there uh, you cannot completely uh, uh, replace or completely get into the automated setup because uh, bamboo is again natural material, so you need artisanal touch in the product. So we want everybody to grow, otherwise um, it doesn't work. No. When we started in 2019-2020, a farmer who was earning around 15,000 rupees per month, now is earning around 45 to 50,000. And it is ever growing actually, because the demand is growing. With over 200 SKUs now, Amuru has developed quite a range that is mostly sold B2B including the top hotels and airlines, while the engineered bamboo is being aimed at the government. It has now also started thinking about going directly to consumers under sub-brands. The revenue numbers are also pretty impressive. So you went from 8 lakhs in the first year, which is 2021. Yeah, 2019-2020. Last year we did 21.75, around 22 crores. 22 crores for the year ending 24, March 24. March 24, yes. 24 crores. And this year you're on track for 60 plus. 60 crores. So in terms of growth, uh, you can see you can already we are already growing at a 3x rate, and we want to keep the growth rate at, at the same space. 95% of our sales comes from B2B. B2B. These are brands. These are uh, majorly from now majorly from hospitality. Hospitality. Hotel chains. Okay. What proportion of is hospitality? So out of 95%, uh, almost now 70% is from. Hospitality, 30% okay. is from uh, contract manufacturing. So first product we started with only toothbrush and combs. Now we are manufacturing almost 2 million pieces per month. Per month. We created three brands. One is I Am Eco, one is Shave Eco, one is Den Crush. Uh, Den Crush is very specific to oral care. I don't consider anyone in India at this moment who is competing with us. Especially the, the, the wide set of products that we have. So most of the competitions that we have is from US and China. Rain Matter was happy to partner as the company is not only commercially savvy but also aware to provide feasible solutions for climate, pollution and livelihood problems. Uh, till date we have measured, we have uh, diverted almost 450 metric tons of plastic waste from going to the landfills. Till date we have delivered more than uh, 10 million products in the market, uh, mostly bamboo products. Uh, then the CO2 offset is also three and a half lakh. Bamboo is a great solution in our arsenal in our fight against climate change. Policies have evolved, entrepreneurs have come up with innovative, affordable solution. Now it's up to us as consumers. The choice is clear. The time is now. Let's make the switch from plastic to bamboo. I'm Hansi. Thank you for joining me for the Climate Conversations.